Hi guys, how's it going? So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how you should structure your studies if you're going alone and learning to program yourself. So I think one of the major questions is when you come to learn something new, uh, be it web development or any new skill, is how do I structure my studies? How do I structure my time? Where do I start? What do I begin with? How do I progress? So I'm here to give you a little bit of structure to that question or those questions. I'm gonna be sharing with you my curriculum from my bootcamp that I studied with. Now, obviously this is a curriculum from 2016. Um, I've updated a little bit for 2018, but I haven't changed it too much in terms of its general structure and outline. So without further ado, let's jump into the computer and have a look at the curriculum. Okay, so this is the Full Stack Web Developer Bootcamp curriculum. Um, it's based again off my curriculum that I did when I was at bootcamp. Obviously I've updated it now for 2018. So I suggest the first thing you look at is what is the web? How does the internet work? How do DNS requests work? What's an IP address? And what the flow of a request on the web is? So when you're in a browser and you type in google.com, what is that flow? Like what's happening behind the scenes? These are all questions you can Google and you can get the answer to. So once you've got a good idea of what the web is, you want to move on to HTML. Now, HTML is called hypertext markup language. It's the building block of the web. I want you to look at how HTML tags work, what kind of tags are out there, what different tags do. Um, once you've got a hang of HTML, then you move on to CSS. Now, CSS is cascading style sheets. It basically styles the HTML tags. And I want you to look at with CSS how to access an HTML tag with CSS. And just a tip, you can use a class, you can use an ID, you can use a whole tag name itself. But again, just Google how to access an HTML element with CSS and you'll find out. So the next thing you need to do uh, once you've got the hang of HTML and CSS is I want you to make a page that looks like this. So each one of these elements that you see here will be a div on a page and you need to style it like that with CSS basically. And then you need to go on and make a project. So the project one I've written down is you need to build a three page website in just HTML and CSS. And the, H and the website needs to consist of a home page, an about us page and an image gallery. So once you've got HTML and CSS down, you need to then look at what is JavaScript but before you actually look at JavaScript itself, look at what is programming, what's an algorithm, what is JavaScript, what's the JavaScript language, and what is ES6? If you just Google those four questions and start reading the answers, you'll start to learn a lot. Once you've done that, you need to look at how to connect a JavaScript file into an HTML page. You need to look at what a for and a while loop is. A little challenge with that one is how do you count to five in the console with a loop? You need to look at functions and what functions can do and look at math operations as well. So addition, subtraction and division and multiplication. You need to look at what arrays are and you need to look at what switch cases are. So that's step one of JavaScript. I also suggest looking at what the DOM is, how to access the DOM and looking at self-invoked scripts and the use strict um, signifier in JavaScript. Once you've done all that, you then move on to advanced JavaScript, look at what regex is, look at objects, look at classes, look at Ajax requests. And at this point, I would also suggest looking at the jQuery library, because um, by this point, you should know JavaScript quite well. Um, and then obviously, by do, looking at jQuery at this point, you'll be able to understand really what jQuery can do for you and what it can uh, allow you to do with JavaScript. So now that you've got all that, you can move on and do project two. Uh, I want you to build a one page website that displays the weather in eight global cities. You need to use an API to get the weather and you can use HTML, CSS and JavaScript and jQuery to build this web app. Now, after you've got that down, look on uh, what is Bootstrap and what is Flexbox. Um, what's the Bootstrap framework? What does it give you over basic CSS? And what's Flexbox and how can it be used to supplement Bootstrap? So these are two very popular um, CSS libraries out there. Most of the industry uses them. So it's important for you to learn them as well. 
Then you also want to look at the same time what HTML5 tags you've got. So, you know, putting audio and video into a page using the iframe. And you can also use the camera API. So you can access a user's webcam natively from the browser. So look at how to use all of those uh, different new tags. So now I want to move on to a little bit of backend stuff um, because this is obviously this is a full stack developer bootcamp course. So look at what Node.js is. Node.js is written in JavaScript, but start with looking at how you can share files between different Node.js uh, files. Look at writing files to the file system, so making a TXT file and writing it to your local computer. Look at the body parser, which basically is used to take text from a client side and take it into Node.js. And look at asynchronous functions. An asynchronous function is a function that can run concurrently. So you can run two or three functions at the same time, and they don't necessarily all have to finish at the same time, or one doesn't have to finish for the other to start. Once you've got the basics of Node down, then look at the Express framework. So that will allow you to build servers. You can look at CRUD commands, so create, read, update, and delete. And look at MongoDB and Mongoose. MongoDB is a database. It's a NoSQL database that, again, is written in JSON objects. And Mongoose is kind of the query language for MongoDB. But this is all joined in with Node.js on the back end. Then after you've got that down, you want to pick a front end framework. Um, I'd personally recommend going for Angular, React, or Vue.js. Just judging by the industry, if you look at job postings, you know, look at the job postings for your local city, wherever you're living, see what uh, is being requested out there in the industry. I personally would recommend going for something like Angular or React. Um, if you tend to look, there's more React jobs than Angular jobs, but Angular, in my opinion, gives you a bit of a better footing. Um, but learn whatever you want, basically. But at that point, you should learn a framework, learn how it works, put it together, how does it interact with a server. But you should know all that by this point. <laughs> and then you've got project three, where you're going to need to build a full stack app. Uh, and I want you to build an inventory app for a clothes shop. You, know, you need to be allowed, uh, you need to allow employees to log in. They need to be able to add either shoes, shirts, trousers, or hats to a database. They then need to be able to do actions on that database. And if you really want to, they need to be able to add an image of the product to the database. And you also need to be able to show that database in a table. So get all the items out of the database and show it to a user when they log in. So there we go. Um, obviously, everything that I've just talked about is linked in the description down below. Uh, I'm also going to put a link there for the presentation itself. So you can go and look at each slide uh, one by one. And I know it was a lot of info and I know it was a lot of um, stuff to take in. But I think if you're just starting out, if you're new, this is exactly how I studied. This is the exact curriculum that I used. That's how I got my first job as a web developer. That's how I'm still a web developer nowadays. Um, but if you have any suggestions or you think there's anything I've missed out or anything that should be included, obviously just let me know in the comments below. I can put an update to the slideshow in Google Docs. And uh, if you haven't done so already, I'd really also appreciate it if you subscribed. And until next time, thanks a lot for watching.